I start my walk today at Hackbridge Station in South London. I'm going to pass through this new development here to reach the Hack Bridge itself. Here it is, the Hack Bridge, passing over the River Wandle. There's a beautiful little community garden tucked beside the banks of it here. The River Wandle, I would say, is one of the great London rivers. It has a very rich industrial history. There are two sources one in Wandle Park near Croydon and the other in Carl Shulton, which we will see later. Uh, there's a fantastic walk that you can do all along this river, which I have done before, um, almost four years ago now. And it's one which I would recommend doing if you live in London. You get to see many new green spaces, which you might not have visited, and you get to see some of the old mills along the way as well. Now, we're not walking the River Wandle today, but I am starting with a small section of it just north of Hackbridge. It's a chalk stream as well, the Wandle, which is why the water is quite clear down there. I love seeing it just trickle along. Oh, this old map here covered in graffiti shows that the new development I walked through beside the station used to be the Felnex Trading Estate. It also labels a future country park. We're gonna go and have a look at that later. You have the terminus of the 80 bus route over there. The Wandle here actually is split into two, effectively creating a small island for this community. Well, that was a delightful morning stroll along the Wandle. We'll see it again later, but for now, I'm turning off to cut across Watercrest Park. Beside Hackbridge Primary School, there's a path that leads you out into a meadows overlooking the pylons of the Wandle Valley ahead. I guess this would count as part of Mitcham Common, the south side of it. That would be up there in the list of largest parks in London, I would say though it gets overlooked by some of the more infamous ones like Hyde Park and Richmond Park. I recommend going to Mitcham Common one day just for the sake of it. It's a good view from here. Looking towards the uh, towers of Croydon, you can see the two IKEA chimneys as well. No way this is still here, this burnt out car. I came across this, oh what, about three and a half years ago now? I guess because it's such a large open common area people just dispose of vehicles here there's a couple of bikes too i crossed over that railway bridge in the background and we'll do that in a moment as well when i first came across this car but i've never walked across this part of the common so it was nice to tick off another corner of mitcham common I'm on a path alongside the railway line now. Can you hear a train? I've just come off of it because <laughs> this view was just too tempting. This is part of Beddington Farmlands, which is not open to the public. It's a very industrial area. The pylons themselves will be heading down to the industrial parts of Croydon. But this is expected to be part of a future country park. That will probably be an entrance into the country park one day. For now though, this is quite a long isolated path with no turn-offs. Beddington Farmlands is a landfill site and sewage works and is expected to form part of the Wandle Valley Country Park. But it's taking quite some time for that to be a thing. It's reminding me of Rain and Marshes, that's also expected to be opened up more to the public and become a country park. Um, but it just doesn't seem like it's happening. I, I don't know when it will happen. We've actually looped around on our walk through the trees here is Hackbridge Station. Can you just about see a train departing? Carrying straight along the path, I've now made it into Beddington Park and I'm passing over the River Wandle again. This is actually the arm that makes its way towards Wandle Park in Croydon. 
My suggestion, if you want to walk the River Wandle, is start in Carshalton. That's a much more manageable distance along its entire course up to the Thames at Wandsworth. But make sure to visit Wilderness Island along the way, as you can see the split between the two branches of the Wandle. If you would like to still walk the other branch towards Croydon, I suggest doing it another day uh, and explore more places along the way. So perhaps start up at Mitcham Common, uh, use Mitcham Eastfield Station, not Mitcham Junction. You can have a look at Mitcham Town Centre as well if you would like to. And then you can come down by Beddington Farmlands into Beddington Park and then along the branch of the Wandle towards Croydon. That's a good little two day adventure that, exploring the River Wandle. I did just place my camera on what looks to be an old millstone, by the way. This is Grange Gardens here in Beddington Park. There's a Grange restaurant here too. Quite a nice building, isn't it? Now that we've left Beddington Park, I'm heading down Lakeside by the lakeside. Around another little lake now. This is Elms Pond. Okay, it's a pond, not a lake. And I'm now at Wallington Green with its war memorial. To me, this feels like an old village green before we decided to just build a bunch of suburbs around here. We're making our way into Car Shelton now. We're going to pass over the Grove Park. That's our second reference to the word watercrest today. You seem like they already have their Christmas lights up. Once you walk across the grove, you make it back to the River Wandle. This is the Car Shelton branch. On this side, <laughs> you've got a very powerful little waterfall. Beside the waterfall, you have the site of one of the old mills. There was a lot along the River Wandle. This one is complete with a water wheel, which I just think is fantastic that this is still here. Really brilliant. There's a couple of other places along the River Wandle where you can spot an old water wheel as well. One in Morden Hall Park, which is fantastic to walk through, and one at Merton Abbey, which is near Collier's Wood, where there's another Wandle Park. And um, I'll let you in into a bit of a secret. Uh, don't tell anyone. There's a possibility, maybe, slight chance, that the River Wandle is my favourite river in London. Oh, what about the Thames though? Thames is an obvious answer. If you want something that's a bit more obscure, River Wandle is my favourite river in London. I've walked along, well, I was gonna say the end of the River Wandle, but actually it's the beginning because it brings me out to the source of the River Wandle here at Car Shelton Ponds. I remember when I first came through here on the bus, I was in awe of how magnificent this was, really. This is in London, at least it is nowadays. I think I am going to claim the River Wandle as my favorite river in London. And in doing so, it makes the source of it here at Car Shelton Ponds even more special to me. Okay, I finally made it over the road. That was almost impossible to do because there's so many cars and no crossing. But here you have Anne Boleyn's well. Legend has it that Anne Boleyn's horse struck the ground here and out came a burst of water, which just goes to show really that we're in a springy area as is the source of the River Wandle is here. That might not be true though, there's a heritage sign here which suggests an alternative to the origins of the well. They don't spell Anne with an E at the end either. Uh, and also there's a second one here about All Saints Church which I'm now going to walk through the grounds of. So 
So apart from Carshalton Ponds, my other favourite location in Carshalton is Carshalton Park, which has two interesting curiosities. The first is immediately obvious as soon as you walk in. It's this massive hole in the ground. But what is it for? Well, this is actually the location of an old air raid shelter, which was discovered in 2012, used during the war to help shelter the civilians of Carl Shelton. I think it's phenomenal that you could see where exactly it was underground because there's now just a huge hole in the park here. And the other thing of interest in Carshalton Park is another hole in the ground. This is the course of a disused canal and it would have ran straight up to this magnificent structure here, the remains of Carshalton Grotto. There's history hidden in plain sight here in Carshalton. It's a fantastic place to do an explore around. I love that you can stand in the canal where the water would have sprung up from the grotto here and headed that way towards Car Shelton. Got to take a peek inside, right? Oh wow. Yeah, you can see the, uh, the brickwork in there. Sutton. I like that you have heritage signs which detail the history of certain places, but that is impossible to read up there. I can't see what that says. So what I do know from not reading the information board is that the grotto was built in 1724. The canal was known as the Westcroft Canal. As I mentioned, there's a lot of springs in the area. The canal is built on one of those springs and it was used to power Grove Mill, the mill which we saw up on the Wandle with the water wheel. So everything is starting to connect now. Carshalton to me is a bit of a secret suburb of London. I never see it mentioned as a place to go and visit in London. And I don't understand why, because there's a lot of very interesting parts to it. Uh, Carshalton Park here might be one of my favourite parks in London, just because of the history that is hidden in plain sight. Uh, I did do a walk around Carshalton in the spring last year. It was a very grey, cloudy day, so it's nice to come back here now on a, on a blue sunny day. I would highly recommend visiting Carshalton if you haven't before. Um, it's a place which deserves more recognition. I've made it to Wallington Station, which opened as Carshalton in 1847. But when the Carshalton Station we know nowadays opened in 1868, this was renamed to Wallington. It's not the nicest entrance in the world, is it? At the base of an office block. I remember coming here for the 455 bus route which now no longer runs. Perhaps you can come here though to start your walk along the River Wandel so you can visit Carshalton Park along the way. It's just occurred to me that Sutton might be the borough in London which I spend the least amount of time in. And then I came across a road sign which shows an old borough name, Beddington and Wallington. That's one which I have not come across before. Ah, this must be the old town hall for the borough of Beddington and Wallington. A bit of road walking for me, up Wallington's High Street, turning left down Stafford Road. Finally made it up the road into my next park, Mellows Park. I don't know what this is here, surrounded by rope. Burial mound? No idea, just a random guess. Really quite nice to be in a green space after walking along a busy road for a while. I've got another road now though down to my next park but thankfully this one is much quieter to walk along. Roundshaw Park is where I've walked up to which leads into a wooded area. I've never walked around this area before. My only experience of Roundshaw was when I came here on the S4. The S4 to Roundshaw though it no longer actually terminates here, the route has changed. And Roundshaw Park leads into Roundshaw Downs, which is quite huge, kind of mirroring Mitcham Common at the start of our walk. I've always wanted to walk across here, get a great view as well of the new built towers of Croydon over there, transmitter tower at Crystal Palace, uh, the Ikea chimneys again, and even some of the buildings of the city of London in the distance. I can spot the Shard. 
an unexpected viewpoint of London. I love it. This might be one of the largest green spaces left in London I haven't explored. Might not be able to make it out, but I think I can spot the BT Tower now, Battersea Power Station, Wembley Stadium, uh, <laughs> Beddington Farmland Sewage Works. <laughs> now this whole area of Roundshaw is the site of the former Croydon Airport, which is London's first airport. It opened in 1920. It was the only international airport during the interwar years. Uh, it was used by the RAF during World War II. But after the war, uh, as planes got bigger and louder, it just wasn't feasible for Croydon Airport to continue operating. They couldn't expand the runways. It was too close to people's houses. So it closed in 1959. I should point out though, that despite it being London's first airport, it's not the first place in London where planes took off from. That was Hendon, Hendon Aerodrome, which opened in 1908. And of course there was a, a scattering of airfields during World War I. Croydon was one of them airfields which opened during World War I but it was the first one where people would actually pay money to be flown somewhere by plane. Uh, all the other airfields up until that point were basically just privately owned and the only people who would fly from them were people who owned the planes. So it was the first place, it was the first actual airport as we know what an airport is today. I think it's brilliant that uh, on the site of London's first airport, you get a great view of London behind me here. Uh, I should also point out that um, back in the day when this opened, it wasn't London, it was part of Surrey uh, up until 1965. But then again, we have London Gatwick, London Stansted, London Luton and London Southend, which are not in London. Actually, I just realised something. Has there ever actually been an airport in what was London pre-1965? I don't think there was. I think all the airfields were outside of it, right? Even London City Airport, which came much later, that bit wasn't in London, was it? That little part north of the Thames was not London back then. Ah, I've come across tarmac. I think this is a remnant of the old Croydon Airport, isn't it? What's with Croydon and burning out vehicles in open spaces, by the way? What are they doing? There's another car all the way over there too. Oh my God, there's a winning Sips cup for McDonald's with a sticker on it still. I got to peel it off to see if it's a winner, even though I can't claim it. Not a winner. The code might have been though, if I put it on the app. Guess we'll never know now. <laughs> and now I've come across uh, more McDonald's rubbish, which is up to date, it's the Monopoly ones, and the stickers are on these too. Well, I got to peel these off to see if I've won anything again. That's not bad, that. Got quite a few there. A couple of them were winners. Anyways, on with the walk. I'm out onto the Pearly Way now. And there's a Battle of Britain War Memorial here, which is quite nice. Oh my God, there's another burnt out car there. Croydon! The irony that there's a tyre sensor here too. <laughs> oh, this is strange. There's a... A disused car park here. I guess it's not used anymore because Croydon just burns all of their cars. Well, here it is. The terminal building for Croydon Airport. It's still here. You can see the control tower in the background. Much smaller control tower than we know nowadays, but then again, there were much smaller planes and runways at this airport than nowadays. Opposite the site of Croydon Airport, you have Colonnade Retail Park, which is built on the site of the old Croydon Water Palace, which was an indoor water park from 1990 to 1996. And it is the terminus of the 119 bus route. I've come to the back of the retail park in the service area, so I feel like I'm not really supposed to be here, but I've come across something which you think would have been a part of the water park, but actually wasn't. This is an old diving board for Croydon Lido, which closed back in 1979, 11 years before the water park opened. I'm wondering if anybody watching has any memories of the Croydon Lido or water park. Feel free to share them down in the comments below. That was an exciting little end to my adventure today. Got a long road walk up though towards the station. 
The only thing blocking me from getting the train home is the awful five ways junction. I've made it to the station, Wadden station to be exact. That walk took me between two new stations in London for me today, through both familiar and unfamiliar locations. And I very much enjoyed it. There's a lot of cars around this area. I can see why I haven't used the station before. I've noticed this with Southern stations. They've never been updated to show the London Overground. New Cross Gate still being shown as an interchange with the London Underground even. Now I'm actually going to hang around here for about 40 minutes until seven o'clock. Uh, just so I pay the off-peak fare home. Luckily, there's a McDonald's over there and I've got some free food to claim. Changing trains at Blackfriars, which has the best view from a platform at a station in London. I was meant to have a bit of a long change here for my train to Hackbridge, but the next train to Hackbridge is actually a few minutes delayed, which means I get to catch an earlier train, so I'll get to Hackbridge and start my walk half an hour earlier than I was intending. <laughs> 